Hello and welcome to another Event Icons Live from Woo! IMAX. So we are very excited to be here in Las Vegas. The last time that you saw us live from IMAX, we were in Frankfurt. We are back stateside and we have so many amazing people lined up. Some familiar faces, some brand new. And uh, we're really excited to be here. And we've got some surprises in store, some really cool stuff from the trade show floor that we're going to bring right in he here to our studio. Um, but first, let's introduce ourselves for those who may be watching for the very first time. My name is Alex Plaxon of Little Bird Told Media, and I am one of the co-hosts. And to my right... I'm Lindsay Martin Bilbury, and I'm the CEO of Nifty Med. I can't talk. I've been talking to the buyers all day. <laughs> My name is Lindsay Martin Bilbury, and I'm the CEO of Nifty Events. Words are hard. My Words name are so hard. So hard. So hard. Will Kern from Endless Events, um, just rocking and rolling. You're Chief Einstein. At <laughs> oh yeah. Endless Events. Yeah, I mean, Chief Event Einstein. You gotta throw your events. title out there. He's modest you. too. Without Will, I mean, Will, this is what IMAX was it that you first went live? Four with years them? ago, I think. Four years wow. ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know anybody when I came to that IMAX. Yeah. and that's how I met everybody <laughs> was doing that live stream. So thank God for the live stream. <laughs> and also to the right. Is someone All I look, the way to I, the right. I've looked up See, greatly to and met at Beyonce my song and come to the left to the left. That's the next time. right. Ne next time we'll come to the left <laughs> to the left. Well, it's funny is I met you for the first time at IMAX. Yeah. Well, I mean, you lead into the thing that I say about IMAX all the time, which is that every year I meet more people in the industry, and every year most of them are here. True. So it's just one of those things that you do meet so many people here, um, and it, it is a fantastic opportunity to to network. And it does. it is hard to believe that I think this is probably my fifth or sixth IMAX here at this point in time. And what's it's already been amazing to me to be out on the show floor and just see how much things have grown. And, uh, you know, the tech pavilion area used to be like, you know, four booths with like, you know, double dutch taking up half of it. <laughs> and, you know, and now it's this like wonderful, like variety of vendors and different types of technology that's out there. So that's what I've already spent a good chunk of the day is just wandering that area and getting, getting the vibe on all of the technology stuff that's here. And for folks who don't know, this is Brant. Kruger. And oh, I totally <laughs> botched the fact that I was I got so excited. Tech specialist yeah. and technical producer extraordinaire. Words are hard. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you're right. That's amazing. You're like, what is my name? Yeah. I am so confused right now. Hi, Brant Kruger, Event Technology Consulting. I do things. <laughs> well, no. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, you know, Brant's right. It, it does grow every year, and that's why we like to bring in some new faces and some new interviews and, and, and really put you at home who can't be here on the pulse of what's going on in the industry because – a lot of people are making big announcements here. We want to make sure that that information is getting to you. Um, we want to talk trends and new things like new podcasts, which uh, is a nice transition. Oh, that's a great transition. So, yeah, so we're going to cut away and we're going to bring in our first group um, for a big announcement that's being made live here at IMEX. Um, thank you for the transition, Alex. You're welcome. And so let's cut to it and start getting into the content. It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Hashtag Event Icons, presented by Endless Events. The show where you get to ask the icons of the events industry anything. Just go to www.event-icons.com to ask questions. Our iconic guests will answer them live during the entire show. Before we get started, the more people we have watching, the better the conversation. So please help share hashtag event icons on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Just tell your friends to watch at www.event-icons.com. Now, without any further delay, this is Hashtag Event Icons. Hey everyone, welcome back to Event Icons Live from IMAX America. And today we have some very special news to share. We've been so excited to share this news that uh, I've been not allowing them to say it until we did this live stream. So um, I really want to dive into it because I think there's going to be a million questions and everyone's going to want to talk about it. But... I, actually, I don't want to break the news. Do any of you guys want to break the news? What we're doing? Well, how about this? Why don't we introduce ourselves really quickly? So you guys know me, Will Kern from Endless Events. Dustin Westling. Dustin Westling from One West Events. Hi, I'm Tui Deep with PRI v Business Events. And I'm uh, Nick Burley from Burley Strategies. And what's exciting is not necessarily what we're doing for normal work, but what we're doing as a side project, as a little side hustle fun. And we have uh, something cool to announce. So um, why don't you guys do it? Like... Super oh excited. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, we've just had the secret that we have to 
I guess if you want to say spill the tea about. And so we will be doing a podcast. This is your host. Uh, all of us will be doing a podcast called Event Brew. And it's an opinionated podcast about the event industry. How we like to say it is it's very much like the conversation that you have not in between like the meetings it's the hotel lobby bar or after the conference right it's those real vulnerable just raw conversations that really connect us all as as an industry that we might be scared to maybe discuss um and we found four people that are brave enough to to do that and so we're really excited and it's been a while like we've been keeping the secret in for like it's months been months <laughs> seriously it's a build up uh what are you guys most excited for for the new podcast um i think i think that it's a great opportunity for us to have conversations that you wouldn't normally have and to um have an opinion in a safe place about topics that I think we're, we're often skirting around or that may be seen as politically incorrect to talk about. So, um, so yeah, we've, we've already put a few, a few episodes down and it's been, it's been a lot of fun and I think it's such a diverse group and everybody has such a different, uh, such a different view. Everybody works in such, such different diverse parts of our industry. Um, I'm the fellow Canadian, so I get to give it the, uh, the, the great North spin and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for it. What makes you excited about it, Nick? Uh, I like the idea that there's a lot of conversations that are had, but uh, people probably don't know that, uh, that there's someone else that thinks the way that they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just maybe thinking that they're isolated, they're in an island, and then they could potentially identify with another person who has the opportunity, you know, has the privilege of having a mic to be able to share that. And then they can see that they're not alone in the way that they think, or maybe even better, who challenge the way that they think, and then actually hear someone and you know use some empathy to be able to uh, come across and uh, understand something that they just didn't hear like that, said like that, because really none of this stuff that we're talking about would be things that you would talk about in uh, your business, right? This isn't going to get you a like anything we're talking about isn't going to get you a new job. It's not going to you know book you another anything. This is the real stuff, and it's not the marketing spin. So I, I enjoy like the the uh, openness, and also I think as we go along, we're going to find out that we're going to uncover some ideas on things that we maybe have been thinking about in the back of our heads, but never really gave voice to. And then hopefully it, it kicks off discussions, you know, in these little groups amongst people and every, you know, anywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Terry, what about you? What makes you excited about this? Oh, gosh. Honestly, the synergy that we have when we have these conversations, it flows so well. And so it's an honor and a privilege to be able to to record that and to have other people in our industry, our fellow colleagues and, you know, partners just be able to to listen in and, and engage with us and really identify with that. What Dustin was saying, we all are from different walks of our industry, and so there's a lot of viewpoints there. And so it's, if anything, you we, we state our percep uh, perception on things, and sometimes we are all lovey-dovey and in agreement, and uh, there will definitely be times where we're in disagreement. And one thing that I do love is the fact that we might not be experts in that certain topic, mm -hmm. and that's where that being a learner for life comes in, and being ab able to to say, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about, or what do you, you know, this is actually how I thought in the beginning of this episode. Mm -hmm. Now my mind's completely changed. So I think that's some. There's something beautiful about that. Uh, oh my gosh, I, I because we're like so into this project, I have so many questions I could ask about this. Um, but I think one of the things I'm most excited about for when it comes to this show is that, uh, you know, probably one of our most popular Event Icons episodes is uh, the episode Shit Event Planners Say. And someone said, so is this basically a podcast of Shit Event Planners Say? And I was like, yeah, in some ways. Um, yeah, in some ways. In some ways. But what I'm excited about, though, is that we had a conversation as we were developing this podcast. What were we going to talk about? What were, like, are, are we going to, you know, cuss at all? And I remember that was like the whole <laughs> conversation. And then I just love that, like, Dustin came in hot in episode two. Um, and it was like, boom. And I was like, well, there you go. They got the iTunes explicit category We're earning now. that rating. Ready to go. <laughs> Great. But it was awesome because like, it showed your passion so much for the topic. And I think we got some uh, good stuff ahead. Um, is there any like last minute quick tips, things that you guys want uh, uh, people to know about before we tell people how to watch and listen? And 
listen primarily since this is an audio podcast? I think I think one of the great things about having a, a conversation is that um, I'm really looking forward to other people asking us to talk about things and when there's yeah. when there's topics and there's things going on in your market or in your business and and you want an opinion on it i'm really looking forward to connecting with people and being able to unpack those conversations and um, we have a running list of topics that we want to talk about but i think uh, i think as we get into this it's going to be really exciting to expand that conversation I mean, for me, uh, the one the one that we just did, like I've had 10 different conversations about it today because it's like my new jumping off mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. And I hope that other people do the same thing. Like I mm -hmm. hope that people like are inspired by bringing something out there that is about what really matters more so than just business. Um, and I, I hope it like just gives people like, you know, two sides, three sides, four sides of something. So when they have their own conversations and it, it makes it meaningful for them, um, they're not just in an echo chamber. Like that's what's great about this. This really isn't an echo chamber. This is bouncing off ideas with people who are opinionated, but also humble enough to say that like we don't know everything. Right. And I think I think everybody's going to find themselves in this conversation. And and what we've already done, it's been you know our we agree on a lot of things, and we're not we're not we're not sitting here. I disagree we're not, on that. We're not. <laughs> We're not we're not recording to disagree with each other, but we there's four honest opinions that are put forward. And when I think about the the teams that I work with, I say there's an opinion for everybody, and 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 everybody should be able to find a little bit of themselves in this. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I do think that we are all experts, but we're experts in us. You know, so we're mm -hmm. we're the experts of how of knowing ourselves. And then coming from that point of view, but it's not about like a topic expert uh, where most things are because that's the point of a, most podcasts you listen to. It's a topic expert. It's going to impress you. She's going to impress you about how knowledgeable they are. Mm -hmm. And it, there's a business value to that. There's a status thing involved in that for this is like there's really just doing it because we like really want to have these conversations. And. I know that like we're at the show now, like I love, love, love like walking in on little conversations and like eavesdropping or whatever. And now we're giving people the opportunity to do that, you know, without any of the guilt. Mm -hmm. I like great. that yeah. eavesdropping and what you were saying, just both of you, we are so similar and this is just life in general. We're so similar, but we've had so many different experiences. And so that is relatable. And so, yeah, we're just so excited and we hope you really do just engage and just watch and really provide us feedback like i would love for people to start suggesting topics mm -hmm. for us i think it's great for us to you know get thrown off and that's and that's really exciting there's really no script to this it's mm -hmm. truly a conversation piece we don't really study or mm -hmm. you know practice lines or anything we, when we nope. go it's nope. <laughs> it goes and I think that's one of the exciting things about it too is that like it, this is totally a departure from anything that's ever been done so far and this is coming from a team that we literally are launching this on another podcast that we already have of interviewing people is that it's, it's totally a complete departure from that and something completely new um, if not known by the explicit tag and by the type of topics that we're having and the types of cool things that we are diving deep into I think this is going to be totally different um, so should we tell them where they can listen to it and everything that would be handy. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to listen to Event Brew right now, it is, as of this moment, live at eventbrew.com. Literally just launched just now. So you can go there. You can sign up on all your favorite podcasting platforms. We're on Pocket Cast, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Pandora, um, you name it. We're everywhere, um, which is really exciting. So stay tuned for lots more of that. We also recorded three episodes so you guys get three episodes worth of downloads so you can get really caught up and see what's going on. We have an awesome conversation ahead. Thank you guys so much for being so vulnerable to, to be hosts on such a crazy idea. <laughs> so uh, should we just, uh, you know, brew it up? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Stay tuned for more icon Ooh, more event icons coming straight from <laughs> IMAX 2019. Nailed it. We'll see. You. I'm, words are hard. <laughs> see you guys soon.
and we're back here live at IMEX America. I'm Lindsay Martin Bilbury, and I'm thrilled today. We have a guest host who's joining us, Kiki Latalian. We stole her from Association Chat, y'all, and she's just coming on in. And then our guest is actually Desi Whitney. Did I pronounce it right? You did. Words are so hard, guys. <laughs> um, and so, Desi, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here at IMEX. Absolutely. So, first and foremost, I'm a mom. I'm also a wife, right? These are things that are important to me. And then from my professional side, I'm a senior vice president of sourcing operations and industry relations. It's a mouthful, excuse me, uh, for HP and Global. We are a global meeting services company. And in addition to that, because I'm an overachiever, I co-founded mm. a business a few years ago called Emergency Concierge International, oh. which is emergency planning for meetings. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's actually really, really important. And I mean, you get a lot of practice with the emergency planning, being a mom, yes. you know, so, <laughs> so let's go into that a little bit. So can we talk a little bit about what that connection is? How, how do you use your experience in being a mom in what you do and the experience on site? Definitely. So, I mean, obviously a lot of triage, right? right. Yeah. And certainly, you know, managing and uh, mitigating stressful situations. And uh, I'm doing a campfire session on Thursday about balancing parenthood and professionalism because I think it is obviously super important. And we're all trying to achieve this thing called balance. And guess what, guys? It doesn't actually exist. No. So. I've been trying. The unattainable dream. But I think the, the important thing is connecting with yourself and redefining and defining your own priorities and what it is that you want to contribute professionally and also personally to your family and to yourself. And I agree. And I think on top of that is the perception because the thing that always seems to kill, especially women, but I know men in the industry who struggle with this too, mm -hmm. is the guilt, right? Like I travel 60, 70% of the time. I have four kids, right? And so like I get introduced as the woman with four kids who has executive platinum status. And it's right. like, it's but like, that's our normal. My kids have preferences on hotel carpet and they like it because mommy gets the upgrades. And it's just a part of ours. But then you go out of the industry and any one of us probably would be relaying something totally normal in our space. And everybody would be like, the face. You right. Know the face. Yes. yes. The judgy face. The, the <laughs> judgy face. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so true. And it, and you feel that inside anyway. There's you're always kind of trying to do this balancing act, and it never seems to work. And what what do you have? You end up having that face that comes back at you. So how do you tell people how to to deal with that? So I mean, my opinion would be to first of all get right with yourself, I love and that. then your GSL <laughs> level goes way no, down, right? I mean, it's so yeah. true though. Like the first step is acceptance. Yeah, and everyone's going to be different. Well, I think so it's important I'm, to know. I'm in trouble for starters. <laughs> <laughs> We're like never going What's important to you? might not be important to me right. and the same for you. And absolutely. then also for your children, especially with four, four totally different personalities, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so I think if you look at that and just figure out what you're good with and then, you know, don't care what everybody else thinks. Oh, I it's don't hard. Know if I can do that. You can. It's going to be great. But see, like, that's the other thing that I adore about this industry because parenthood and professionalism is tied together and there's an incredible network because we all struggle with it yes and it's like it's not work-life balance but a blend yeah or the cluster that we are working with currently that day and so when you're like I am falling apart because my kid is sick and my mother-in-law is guilting me because I need to come home you have somebody else that is going to no you don't you are here doing your job like an amazing person it's going to be fine Right? It absolutely is going to be fine. So tell me a little bit like your campfire session that you're doing. What are a lot of the questions you're getting from the people as you're going through the advice you're sharing? So a lot of questions on my experience, you know, so I wouldn't call myself an expert necessarily, right? But I have gone through my own experiences, which have been challenging. And it's obviously related to travel and figuring out how to balance all of this stuff. And so, you know, my advice to those folks would be, like I mentioned, get right with yourself and figure out your own priorities. But in order to do that, you have to go through a process of exploration and kind of some introspection and really paying attention to what is making me feel good, what's making me feel bad. You know, if you are constantly in this guilt kind of shaming uh, experience, it's not going to serve anyone well. So let's figure out what you need to be whole for yourself professionally and personally. And uh, I've developed a worksheet actually to help us all out. Because oh, I, I love that. a good worksheet. Love okay. <laughs> you have a spreadsheet. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so if you yeah, text absolutely. balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E to 33777, Oh, You'll say it one more time for the audience. Balance. So text balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, 
to 33777 and then you can download this worksheet and I'm not going to spam you or anything it's totally free it's <laughs> my gift as a contribution to you know all of the other parents that are out there trying to do what we do can I ask you okay so did you just know this or did you go through your own process how did you how did you even figure this out so I went through a couple of years ago I had a major anxiety attack and oh, went no. to the hospital because I thought I was having a heart attack. And so that wow. was a big eye-opening experience for me, obviously. And I went, okay, something's not right here, you right. know? And so I was putting too much stress and pressure on myself and trying to be all things to all people. And so after that, I had to go through this whole kind of exploration process on, okay, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? What do I need to do in order to solve this for myself? And so that's basically what the worksheet is, is built off of my experience on, I've already done this, guys. It's not fun. So just avoid that and, you know, try to figure it out right now before you get too, you know, too deep. Right. I like that you talk about it as a journey of exploration because it is so different for each one of us. But if you had to, because one of the common questions I get are, I'm going to be a new parent. Mm -hmm. What should I prepare for? Like, am I going to have to make these huge changes in my life or can I keep doing what I'm doing? What would, what advice would you give to the new parents? I would say, give yourself a lot of patience <laughs> and throw your expectations out the window, you know, because you don't know. And I have a lot of uh, young women on my team that are entering, you know, parenthood and whatnot, and they'll come in and they'll have this whole conversation on their plan for maternity leave and then back and the gym and all this stuff and cooking. And, and I just say, girl, just give it a minute, you know, like let's get into that experience and see how it feels. You might love some certain things about parenthood. You might not love some certain things and you don't know how that's going to feel until you're in that space. I feel like we do this too, like after the beginning of the first of the year and whenever there's, you know, I kind of gear, gear myself up. I like read Atomic Habits. I was, this is redecorating. <laughs> this is multi-purpose, multitasking. No, but you know, it's, I read uh, Atomic Habits and got my checklist in order and I'm like, I'm gonna be super mom. I'm gonna be awesome at my job. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get in shape. I'm gonna do keto. I'm gonna do all of the things. You're giving me an anxiety attack over uh, here. Don't you feel You need it? to breathe, because otherwise feel, I can't breathe. No, but you feel the pressure and then you know what happens is, so it's not just the new parents, it's us all yeah. along the way, we get caught up in trying to be perfect and we're never gonna be perfect. Right, never gonna be perfect. And also know that sometimes our balance gets out of whack, right? Yeah. And so we've got a lot going on right now with a you know a bunch of different shows kind of crammed into a small period of time so all of us right now are going to be a little out of balance mm -hmm. but then we have to make sure that we pay attention to okay what does the rest of October look like what does November look like how are we resetting mm -hmm. and you know getting right with ourselves to make sure that we're back in balance okay I just love that she just that was totally relatable <laughs> and relevant to anyone who'd be watching event icons right now because you're yes you get into this season it never ever ever stops it never stops yeah. and then you get to those those certain times of the year where you know it's going to get amped up and it's just going to get up you know further and further more involved more and you're saying all right you know this is coming. You know it's coming. You know but it's not coming. only that, I feel like we shouldn't suffer through the grind, right? Yeah, yeah. To make sure that we're finding joyful experiences and taking care of ourselves while we're on the road and figuring out what that looks like. Is it a late night karaoke? Maybe. That yes. feast, that <laughs> it is it total IMAX karaoke. Yeah. Or is yes. it going to bed early or maybe having a bath <laughs> or, you know, or any of those things, but not grinding yourself out to that point where you need rescued, but just taking a minute here right. at the show and having a breath. And so I think one of the things that we haven't done, so what's really unique is it's three women talking about this, right? And it's really, I think, indicative of how we tend to treat parenthood and professionalism. It's the women who are doing the things. But like Brant, I like Brant always, he's like, why you make me the woke guy? But his wife travels more than he does. And there are all these balancing acts that they're trying to do. And he's taking a conscious step back. And it's so refreshing. But then we were talking about it at lunch yesterday. He's like, and I'm like super dad, right? Because I'm staying at home and helping with the kids and doing the things. And like women, they're like, why didn't you take the red eye home? Your children need you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I, we would like to encourage that it's not just the women that we're in talking to about this right, balance everyone, applies to right. all of us because the industry does burn all of us out and forces us to think about what that looks in but women open ourselves up inside the industry that professionalism has to extend where we don't necessarily give them a superhero cape for you know being super dad 
but we also go, no, you have a responsibility to be a partner too in your life. And so we need to have that. Do you get more women or men at your events now that I've stepped off my soapbox? So more women, but I definitely agree. And, you know, my husband travels as well. And, you know, I do you know, I feel like I'm good at the scheduling and that sort of thing. And I'm more social than he is. Right. So that's going to mm-hmm. gravitate towards me, but he is very much, you know, he's a 50% contributor, right. To this child. I love and, that. Yeah. And so I think that that's important. And, uh, you know, I, obviously I do see a lot more men stepping up and, you know, paternity leaves nowadays and, uh, and all of that and stay at home dads and whatnot and, you know, kind of leveling and even playing field. I like it. So what's the one thing you would leave for event professionals of all genders coming out to balance that parenthood and professionalism as we go into Q4 and try to figure out what 2020 is going to look like? So my, I would say have a conversation with your family, and that includes yourself. So you can't take care of yourself and you can't serve others if you're not right uh, within yourself. So have a conversation with yourself on what it is that you need in order mm-hmm. to feel balanced and have a conversation with your spouse and your children on what they need. And then stick to the plan, stick right? To stick it. to the plan. But then also, you know, explore. Maybe what they said doesn't actually work. And in a time of high stress, it needs to be readapted readapted and that is i mean you have to reassess you probably need to bring out that checklist again and uh, make sure that you make things are still the way that they were right definitely yeah okay things change life change <sighs> ladies i love it it's like we have these conversations and it refreshes me and it's why you come to it thank you so much desi we appreciate it thank you thank kiki you. for swooping in and being Happy awesome be as here. always yes. and thank you at home for watching us we're going to be back in a flash with more event icons live from imex america And we are back, and this is my first uh, segment of today, so I'm very excited to have my good friend John Ellenfelt with us. We're going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, diversity and inclusion. And I know this is something that you have been focused on for a long time. Tell us a bit about your background in this, how you got involved. Uh, I know that you have been studying this. Tell us your background. Sure, absolutely. Well, one, thank you for having me today. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Diversity and inclusion is definitely a passion of mine. Uh, I kind of got into it uh, accidentally when attending WEC receptions for MPI, their global annual conference. Um, I remember being handed a small piece of paper that talked about a special interest group uh, for LGBT uh, attendees, and I went to it, and it was just a handful of people that met in. Um, Sounds very secretive. <laughs> secretive. Here's yeah, a little off note. To the side. <laughs> Nobody really talked about it. It was very hush hush. And then uh, the following year, the the individual that set that up actually retired from the industry, and people were saying, "When's the event? When's the event?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just attended it." And then. Uh, it seemed like through osmosis I ended up inheriting that event. So I've been running it for 18 years with MPI and I've been a uh, goal of pushing the needle through that, of growing it in attendance and sponsorship uh, to where it is now. It's in the program and on the mobile app for MPI at WC. It's big. Like, it is the go-to like meetup. Like, everyone goes to this i appreciate and that. everyone goes oh are you are you going to reception yeah i'll see you there yeah so we had 400 people in toronto yeah. at the wc for mpi and uh paul van deventer the president and ceo of mpi was president as well as upper leadership with mpi so uh that's just been so much of a uh, passion of mine i decided to become more educated in that and i enrolled in a program through cornell university uh, to be certified on their executive leadership program in diversity and inclusion and um, i think some of my great takeaways were uh, that diversity and inclusion is very similar to nailing jello to a wall and uh, i've never tried that <laughs> but uh, i don't think it'd be very easy <laughs> exactly and the reason that that that's kind of a great way of summing it up is uh, everybody seems to, it's a hot topic right now and everybody seems to understand diversity and inclusion, but they focus only on the diversity part of it, which is the demographics component of it. Uh, Your gender, your person of color, LGBTQ, introvert, extrovert, instead of looking at what inclusion is. And that's really the tough part to put a, a, 
uh, a name to and to grasp. And um, but so, you, so what do people think inclusion is? They think inclusion is just that everybody is welcome, and it goes so much more beyond that. That is really more of a psychological safety aspect of it. Much like when you work for a company, in your employee manual it says you won't be discriminated against based on all these different things: race, religion, color, sex sexual orientation. Uh, but beyond that, it's when you bring your true authentic self to all you do. And that's either with your involvement with your work, with an association. And when you are actually able to do that, the differences of the background and experiences that you've had because of the diversity that you have as an individual, whichever component you relate to, allows you to be a change agent for a group, association, or organization for the better. And there are really specific uh, uh, metrics around that, that companies that embrace that and are really doing a good job of bringing your true authentic self to the table are 25% more profitable, they have less turnover, and they really drive innovation because the innovation comes from that myriad of background and experiences. And it isn't always just the, the typical ones of gender or ethnicity, it could come down to areas of introvert, extrovert. So in a team dynamic, an extrovert, let's say you're the extrovert, could be more vocal. I, am. I, <laughs> I thought nothing less could be more vocal about an opinion. And let's yeah. say I'm the introvert and you in a team dynamic express a solution to a particular task or, or project that we're going for. And I associate with about 90% of what you're saying and think Alex is strategic. He has, has good insight. I'm going to go ahead in the team dynamic and vote for his idea. But as the introvert, maybe my idea was the one that was more 100% best for the group, but it was never heard because right. I'm an introvert. And so you put metrics in and ways to make sure that everyone does have that inclusive voice at the table. You could vote on the project uh, anonymously where everybody writes it down and puts it in a bucket and you pull it out and read those. Right. Or as uh, a team leader, you could call on the introvert first and say, hey, John, share your opinions on what you think about on this project. So in, in, that, in that instance, it's important to know who your team is and what your team is comprised of. Because I think a lot of times when you're talking about diversity and inclusion, there is an element of people keeping certain things about themselves to mm -hmm. themselves. So I love the idea of being your authentic self because in that case you're sharing, hey, I am an introvert, but here's some things that you can do to help me get my ideas across, right? Mm -hmm. And that takes time and it takes effort. And it's not just a warm and fuzzy, hey, everyone's welcome, right? That's like <laughs> very true. And you also need to be able to put in some practices that make sure you get to that level of everyone having a voice and a seat at the table because there are certain elements such as unconscious bias that can mm -hmm. creep in that are stereotypes that are not necessarily true, but over the years have become kind of the mainstay. So you have a man being really aggressive and forthright on his opinion is seen as a leader and being a strategist where a woman, it could seem more as being nitpicky or difficult. Right. And that is not the case on those types of situations. And so you got to make sure you put the metrics in to get everybody a seat at the table. And some entities are doing a good job at that. The state of California, uh, just in 2019 this year, has a new law where if you are either doing business in California or you're based in California, you have to have a minimum of one female on your board of directors. And by the time you get to 2022, you're going to have to have half of your board of directors wow. be female. And that means if you don't, there are fines. They start at 300000 and escalate from there. But the real metric behind that is now they have a seat at the table. So when discussions around equal pay for equal work come into play, they're there to give a voice for it and that gender should not come into play on equal pay versus equal work. So now right. you have moved the needle and you have the metric of a seat at the table and that's when your inclusivity begins. So what work still needs to be done? I know there's so much, but you know, obviously things are happening, right? With California and some other states are working on stuff like this, but it seems like there's still so much work to do. Like what's a small step that someone you know, in their organization can take 
to move that needle. Sure. I think everybody needs to realize that they have a sphere of influence and that they can be an element of change. And it can start from the beginning in our industry. If you're a college graduate, you look at uh, statistics show that college graduates, 66% of them, look at a company profile to see what kind of platform they have on diversity and inclusion. And that's an important aspect on who they're going to work for. But if you take it a step further, they don't need to wait for somebody to be an evangelist and and be the poster child for it. They themselves can actually make that change. If you look at the United States having um, over 360,000 people in the workforce and in the population, 18% is Hispanic and 14% is African American. Those two percentages combined, if they make the decision to not buy products from companies that don't have a well vetted diversity and inclusion program or work for those entities, that's an element of change right. because those companies will not be profitable and either they will change and move forward with what the current uh, times are as far as importance of DNI, or they'll be left behind. And so they become that individual element of change instead of waiting for a collective group to do it. And that's really what's going to move the needle. And that's where everybody can have a place and a voice. So I'm going to ask a tough question. Okay. I like right. tough questions. Tough question. So, you know, especially this year with uh, LGBT pride in June, mm -hmm. there was a lot of talk about all these organizations just throwing a rainbow on their logo and calling it a day on social media, right? And there's this discussion, you know, with Nike and Colin Kaepernick of, of pandering to certain minority groups. So I think there is a little bit of a fear of, well, if we try something, people are just going to think we're pandering. So what is the difference between authentic diversity and inclusion and just doing it for the ability to say we do it? That's a, a really good question. So when you're just doing it for the ability of saying you're doing it, as you're mentioning, that's really more of marketing to, let's say, the LGBT community, right. since you brought that up as an example. The actual other metric to make sure that they walk the walk and talk the talk is to see what kind of program structure that the organization has in place. So they may hire people that are from a diverse background, which leans to that demographic check mark I mentioned earlier on diversity only. So many people of this gender, people of color, people LGBTQ, handicap. But does the organization, whether it's a, a corporation or an association, have components built in with it? Do they have meetups for people that identify with those particular groups? And do those meetups have their own purpose within the organization? And do they have a voice to the board of directors and the CEO of the organization? Are they able to put in components that affect the way the company operates and the way the company believes in its product? Does that mean not going into countries that maybe are uh, having issues with human rights? That may be. Does that affect the profitability of the company? Yes, it does. But there are other streams and avenues to make that organization profitable, and they can then come to the table with those ideas. So again, back to those metrics, when somebody feels they're bringing their true authentic self, companies are statistically proven to be 25% more profitable because they get more output from their employees because right. they believe the company is invested in them and they're invested in the company. And that's where you're going to have that needle moving. So people need to stop looking at DNI as a demographic metric checkbox and more of the inclusivity of it is does this diverse group have a seat at the table and do they have a sphere of influence to make a change so as meeting professionals what can we be doing specifically for our meetings to make sure that we are being inclusive that's an excellent question. There are many different components of it. A lot of people will focus on the meeting itself, meaning do we have a diverse audience? Are we taking care of things as far as uh, balance and gender, people of color, people of certain religious backgrounds? Again, that's that psychological safety, but does your program or meeting have a format developed to where you are getting that true authentic self, meaning that that diverse thoughts are not only welcomed, but they're sought after and encouraged to be shared. Do you have a platform that allows them to do that, whether it's anonymously, whether it's in a team dynamic, or whether it's specifically going out and asking them those tough questions? So more diversity of thought, less 
demographics. Correct. Because once you have that inclusivity where that diversity of thought is coming into play, that's where innovation is, is sparked. And that's right. really going to be the driving agent for whether an association is successful or a corporation is profitable or whether membership is going to grow. So is, well, diversity of thought is really the importance. Is there still a place for the demographics? Like, I know that sometimes they talk about the idea of, well, if, if you're not seeing it, for example, as speakers, right? If you're not seeing mm -hmm. you represented up on that stage, you mm -hmm. feel unwelcome. So there's still room for the demographics. There's definitely room for the demographics and the demographics should be your foundation part of it because once you've laid those metrics in there that you're gonna have this diversity of people of color, sex, gender, then you actually have your platform and you build the inclusivity on top of that. So the demographic part of it does have a vital part of it and sometimes that's the easier one to be able to put those metrics in play legally much right. like i mentioned with the state of california and then the rest is going to bubble to the top i like that i like that that's the foundation like that's that's the minimum that's the minimum, <laughs> that's the minimum. and that's, that and that is what doing. all organizations are currently doing and right. the inclusivity part is the tough part some companies do it really well nike is an example of a company that has that just woven through everything that they do um, and others have uh, some growing steps to do and hopefully everybody views themselves as an element of change and a sphere of influence and are able to take that stand and move that needle forward so in our last minute um tell us a bit about i know you're involved in a lot of organizations mm -hmm. so tell us who you're involved with and kind of what projects you're currently working on. Sure. Well, I'm currently proud to serve on the International Board of Directors for Meeting Professionals International and uh, leading the efforts on diversity and inclusion. And that's where some of those metrics you mentioned are coming into play, making sure that foundation is strong for them so that we can get all that inclusivity through the events, through the speakers, through everything that they do. Uh, I'm also involved at universities. I like to be able to go and speak to the students that are graduating from the hotel and hospitality management program because they are the future. I love to tease them that they may someday be my boss, so it's important <laughs> for me to be here. But I want them to feel that element of change that they can be the one to move the needle. So that's another aspect that I'm near and dear and proud to be part of and just recently was uh, appointed to serve on the advisory board for my alma mater, California State University Fullerton in Southern California. Um, but I like to be involved in anything that touches that. So Society of Incentive Travel Executives, MPI, uh, PCMA, all of them are important. And I believe that if you're out there spreading that message and getting more people to understand that it may be like nailing jello to a wall, but it has to start somewhere. Right. And once you get that first one tacked onto the wall, then you have your roadmap to success. And also uh, LGBT Meeting Professionals Association. LGBT Meeting Professionals Association. I'm on the advisory board for that as well. Yeah. And uh, that is one of those uh, kind of special interest groups that has risen because of a need for that. You have that one. You have Black Coalition of Meeting Planners. The important thing is if the mothership yeah. associations, whether it's site or MPI, understand that a need isn't being met and that this is going to help bridge that gap then it helps bring everyone into the fold and make sure that everybody is feeling uh, welcome and included well this was eye-opening because i think a lot of people they know what it is but they don't so i love the stuff that you were saying about the inclusivity because i think really we, we've all got the diversity we, we mm -hmm. think we have that but it's the inclusivity if someone wants to get in touch with you what's the best way to contact you uh, they can email me uh, my work email is john at surfcityusa.com for visit huntington beach so that makes that pretty easy uh, they can also reach out to me on facebook linkedin instagram all the social media channels i'm not as much of the expert that alex is <laughs> he is my mentor for that area but um, you can also reach out to alex and he he can make sure that uh, connects to me as well yep. uh, in that area. And so we'll, we'll I'm always sure happy to help. All of that down below. Thanks so much, John. This was great. And uh, we'll be right back with our next guest. Thank you for having me.
All right, next up, we've got Amin from C2 International. For anybody who doesn't know, it's one of the most innovative business events that's out there. We've had uh, several conversations with some of the folks from C2 over the years, so it's always exciting to uh, uh, check in with you guys and find out what's new and exciting. So uh, tell folks a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm, the, I'm I'm in what I am head of partnership for uh, C2 Montreal, and I oversee moving on. So uh, anything related with activation with companies such as Nespresso, Facebook, BMW, how we interact with the participants, um, what we do differently, I think, is uh, with the facilitation of events, uh, and we always built everything around three pillars, which will be learn, connect, and experience. That's how we engage in every event that we work with and companies that we work with. I mean, it feels like uh, every time we hear from you guys, you guys are trying something new. And one of the big changes this year is an actual change in location. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, but we had, uh, we've been, events going to be going on, uh, for eight years, and like we were at uh, uh, Arsenal, which was a beautiful art gallery for uh, seven years. And at first it was in the New City Gas, so last year we had to make a change uh, because uh, some condos were built on the, on the, on the Arsenal field. Uh, and we went to we're, we went to a Studio Grande, uh, which is a great venue. It's a huge warehouse. They actually filmed uh, uh, film some X Men movie there okay. and a Marvel movie. So uh, we were, for us, it was quite impressive because we had 60 feet uh, um, scaffolding that could build, build built up. We had to make some changes because uh, it's a new site. Uh, we used to have like our, our famous balcony, which our, our company hosts their clients. Uh, and boxes that were outside next to a plaza. Uh, now we had to put it inside and we created a girl spirit. So we had to play around it, but uh, great success. Like we definitely stressed to switch location, but it went well. So I mean, already you can tell if you haven't if you haven't heard of C2, which you know you probably living under a rock somewhere. Uh, you know that that you're you're in a unique space for <laughs> for a business environment, and that translates you know all the way through. So uh, I know there's been you guys have been trying some new things with uh, the various activations. You mentioned a couple of companies that we may have heard of from time <laughs> to time. Um, you know, so what's what what, have you, what were you seeing as far as the new activations? Uh, but for us, what it's tough to be honest is since we reinvent the event every year, and it's like it's no the same concept doesn't come back. Uh, it's great for the business, but it could be challenging for us internally. Uh, last year we did something uh, <laughs> completely redoing everything. Every time. <laughs> yeah, every year. challenge what? No. <laughs> uh, but definitely like, uh, but we're lucky to have great partners. Like when we pitched them ideas to go forward, like you probably everybody saw the trend of go to yoga in the past year. Uh, we're business events, and we had Facebook that we thought we did a great activation with them. And we're with Goat Yoga, so you could just stop by, get, like cut a little goat if you want, and like <laughs> in the business suit. And the people from like 25 to 60 years old, so it was like pretty cool to see. Uh, we did some speed coaching within the BMW car, right? so like to keep to keep, get out of the traditional car that you have a trade show, we're like, how can we activate within it? Uh, so uh, we did some speed coaching in there with a life coach, 30 minute sessions. Uh, so he brings you to the destination. So that's how we... Pack. So a speed coach? Yeah. Okay, so are you being taught to go faster or taught <laughs> to go slower? Uh, he tells you a problem pretty much. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So so I just wanted to expand on that a little bit. I mean, so... Uh, I'm assuming that was by BMW that was yeah. actually doing yeah, it. Okay, yeah. so they're providing. So rather than just like, hey, check out our new car, yeah. let's put a little bit of a twist on it. Okay, cool. So cool. to bring you to the next destination. I don't know that I want to know how <laughs> good or bad of a driver. Watch I out! Am. Like uh, I saw BMW doing the self-driven car with Lyft here. I might. It's uh, something that's going to come up soon. I, I, I'm of two minds when it comes to the, the, <laughs> the, the uh, self-driving car, but that's a, that's another rabbit hole for another time. Um, what are what are some of the other innovations that you guys are working on this year? Uh, but what's quite interesting is um, we also put on an event called uh, Moving On, which is the World Mobility Summit, and we do with partner Michelin, so a uh, big company that people know. But they give us a f we're, like, they give us like a blank canvas to to redesign their event, and we've been doing it for three years. And uh, mobility for us, I think it's going to be something that's going to take over the world pretty soon. Uh, the Michelin, like the tire company. Yeah, so yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, perfect. They tie really, yeah, like, yeah. They, uh, they really advance and like they're pushing forward. They're really forward thinking, uh, even the, if you think it's only tired. And like uh, last year, we had, like, we had a big uh, activation with them that we did uh, with um, the aquarium inside. All the content is within one of an aquarium. Uh, so it's like a big, w like, box with windows around it and all the content is 360 so you could like you guys do live streaming what we call social showcase it podcast it right after all the speaker go through that so 
We try to cut like you guys who learn from you. We're doing a lot of content. <laughs> well, and it's, it's a feelings mutual. We get to steal stuff from you guys as well. I'm pretty sure we're going to have event icons goat cuddling uh, as soon as possible, just so we can get that. Um, what else is new and exciting this year? Uh, but for next, but for next year, we're definitely going to have. Uh, we're looking to probably a new site. <laughs> So, we so, once, so the, the warehouse was not quite... Uh, <laughs> but it's big production, yeah. so you never know yeah. uh, where we could go out on that. So, uh, I would and we like challenge, too. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you're trying to find some place, a little that, that permanent home again yeah. that you had, maybe with Arsenal, um, mm -hmm. that you can try and get, you know, know the space and, and have that familiarity. Because um, it's, it's, it's always interesting to me how often we're moving our conferences, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, rather than actually settling into a place and getting comfortable with it and letting the attendees mm -hmm. get comfortable with it as well, this desire for the new. But at the same time, we're also fighting in the industry, you know, the experiential, that everything's got to be an experience. How do you guys balance um, having to try something new and mm -hmm. redesign, like you said, redesign the event from the ground up every single year with that, like, at the same time, delivering a consistent experience does that make sense that like it's going to be if i come two years in a row i'm still going to have it it's going to be great either way yeah uh, but first off like as i said in the beginning uh, we built everything with three pillars which is learn connect experience the learning aspect is goes through our, our stages uh but our stages like we have two big stages last year we had the cabaret uh, the beautiful stage but we set it up like a real cabaret think about like in paris and france like uh, the cozy aspect, tables, tables uh, yeah, like sit, yeah, stage yeah. in the middle. So all the speakers were having a conversation around a round table. Uh, we decided to do the Agora for 2,500 people, how to make it like cozy again and like uh, feel like uh, people like getting engaged with a participant. We decided to put a piano on it. And so like the, and the panel and the facilitator, the journalist that was interviewing, uh, let's say, Will I Am last year, uh, with Strategy AI, like, uh, was crazy because it was on a piano. So like it's more familiar aspect and people get more comfortable. Well, that's perfect in the context of a cabaret. Yeah. yeah. The music and the, yeah. The, um, so I would imagine, I mean, and, and this is something we've talked about a lot on this show and over the course of the last couple of days, kind of going back to the why. And so by keeping those three pillars, that's, that's kind of your mm -hmm. consistency. So as long as whatever it is that you're doing, um, you know, relates to that and supports that and continues to work out of those three pillars, uh, that, that I would assume gives, gives you that consistent yeah. experience. But it's also something that you mentioned, I try to do different uh, difference it's uh like in terms of sustainability uh, i think it's uh, like uh, most of the events are talking about it uh, when you see what people do with plastic and companies that take uh, make take makes move uh, us last year we decided to have no red meat on uh, on site uh, i'm a big meat lover but like it's it's something that actually move again push the message of moving forward maybe next year we'll be vegetarian for the three days. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, again, there's another rabbit hole we could go into, but the, the, the idea of like the Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger and things like that, yeah, I'm, I'm not a vegetarian either, but I love the idea of, of these things. And like, if I can have something that's 90% as good <laughs> and is 90% is, is not as bad for the environment, it sounds like a fantastic way to, to help pitch in. And that's a very, that's a, that's, you know, I'd say that's kind of a bold choice, right? To, to say, we're just not going to do that. Um, because of the environmental impact of that thing. Um, any other surprises you want to you want to tease folks with as far as coming up? Uh, but it's for sure we're gonna definitely like we used to have balconies and we're thinking about new ways of hosting. So uh, that's something different. And uh, we uh, we're definitely looking at designs of of new stages. So we'll see what's gonna be forward. And uh, we'd love to have you guys uh, to come to come to see to Montreal next year, May 27 to the 29th in Montreal. End of May, beautiful weather. I was just going to tee you up. I was <laughs> going to say, so cold. if folks want to find out more and maybe <laughs> register for the conference, where can they, where can they do that? Uh, on C2Montreal.com. C2Montreal.com. Quite easy. It's uh, telling you May is the best month. And Montreal is a great hub. Like, uh, we have companies such as Cirque du Soleil, Moment Factory, uh, and a lot of creative company uh, in the city, uh, like a Sid Lead ad agency. So it's fun to go around, not only come to your event, even experience other companies. Uh, and the AI is pretty big. So we're known for two things at the moment. So. Nice. Well, I mean, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope I encourage everybody to check it out, and maybe we'll see you in Montreal. <laughs> thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch all the bonus content, resources mentioned, and an invite to our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, head to www.event-icons.com. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway. Just tag your post with hashtag event icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on hashtag event icons.